One of Spokane's most notorious bootleggers was an Italian immigrant named Albert Camellini. After immigrating from Italy in 1904 at the age of 13, he worked for the railroad, eventually moving west to Spokane. Spokane was just where the train stopped. There was a big Italian community here in Spokane. Albert quickly established himself in Spokane, earning a reputation as a successful entrepreneur. One of his many businesses included an Italian importing company in the Trent Alley district. His sister Lita, famous for her chicken cacciatore, ran the lunch counter. He had 10 to 15 trucks that he delivered supplies to these different stores and, and picked up from the railroad cars and did all the things that he did um, with the importing company. During Prohibition, Camelini's trucks delivered more than Italian food. One Prohibition-era police officer recalled Albert Camelini was the kingpin here. He had a big Cadillac and would drive the streets all night long. He used to tell the commissioner which cops he wanted on the beat. When the shipments came in, oftentimes the police would capture those shipments and bring them into the police station. Grandpa was the one that would get the call that the liquor was there, and uh, he would be able to go down into the police station and, and drive the vehicle out with no problem, and then that liquor was distributed um, through the Spokane area. Camelini also supplied the necessary raw ingredients to local moonshiners. He'd buy sugar by the truckload. When asked what he did with all that sugar, he replied, I make good pies. Albert Camelini was arrested numerous times, even twice in one day, but showed an uncanny ability to avoid most of the consequences. Once, though a jury convicted him, a judge took the case under advisement and dismissed the charge four months later. Fines for bootlegging were generally small, usually a mere $100, considered just a cost of doing business. In two days, you can make you know five to 10 times that, that amount. That's, that's a lot of money. So it's just like any business, you know, supply and demand, and it was a big supply and, and uh, a big demand. For six years, Camelini owned the exclusive Ambassadors Club, one of Spokane's most extravagant nightclubs. It was very beautiful inside. He did a lot of terrazzo flooring. They had a, a full band there and full dress. It had a dance floor, a movie theater, and 15 private dining rooms. It was out of the way. There was people that could go in, and there was people that couldn't go in. And uh, I think it had to do with who you were and if you were part of the what they call the good cops or the bad cops. So it, was, uh, it certainly was exclusive. At one time, Al Capone's brother, Frankie, visited Spokane and considered buying the ambassador. The deal fell through. Less than a year later, the club burned to the ground in a suspicious fire. Somebody did Albert wrong, a family member later said. Camelini rallied after the fire and bought a chicken ranch off Dartford Road and built a roadhouse restaurant on the site. He named it Camelini Junction and convinced the county bus service to put in a stop. There used to be a sign up there that said Camelini's Junction, world's smallest town, all under one light meter. Once Lita started cooking, the restaurant became popular, serving great Italian food. Today, the Sagetti family, descendants of Alberts, still own and operate Camelini's for special events and Lita's famous Italian dishes. Renamed Camelini Estates, the historic landmark provides a unique venue for all types of special events. Rumors of tunnels, secret meetings, and hidden bootleg liquor still linger around Camelini's Junction. But no one's talking. With fond hearts, the Sagetti salute the memory of Albert Camelini and his colorful storied life on both sides of the law. <laughs>